Hello, everybody. This is Phil Goldberg with American Veda Tours, and I'm here with my colleague and friend, Swami Brahmananda, aka Brahms. Namaste, AKA, Phil. Namaste, <laughs> Brahms. Brahms is in Assisi, Italy again, <laughs> with uh, the home is the home of St. Francis. I am in Los Angeles, the uh, home of the Dodgers. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and um, we're going to talk about another leg of uh, the tour that's coming up uh, September 15th to October 5th. And um, I have to say, Brahms, one of the joys of doing these tours is just hanging out with you and having conversations like the ones we're doing here. What, do you, what should we talk about this time? Let's talk a little bit about Rishi Kesh. That was one of the highlights of the last tour, and the Maharishi was there, and that's where they met the Beatles. And uh, yeah. tell us a little bit about that. I mean, it was it was magical last time. Well, you know, and it's great because this is actually the fiftieth anniversary. For those of you who want to feel old, contemplate that for a minute. It's the this year, <laughs> this year is the fiftieth anniversary of. Uh, the, the famous time the Beatles spent with Maharishi Mahesh Yogi in Rishikesh. And uh, for, you know, I could talk for an hour just about that. And sometimes I do talk about an hour, uh, uh, for an hour about that, sometimes with live music. And we'll do some of that while we're in Rishikesh to celebrate this 50th anniversary. And we hope that there, there's talk of there being a uh, music and a peace and music festival honoring that anniversary while we're there and we'll be part of that so we'll update people coming to the on the tour about that but um when the beatles went to india it, it really made history and not just musical history it was a watershed moment in this whole transmission of uh, yoga and indian spirituality to the west uh, because of who the Beatles were and uh, what transpired after that. And, and, and we will go into that in, the, in our conversations while we're on the tour and while we're in, in Rishikesh. And the, the ashram where they stayed uh, was uninhabited for many years and had gone to ruin. Uh, people can see pictures of it online. Uh, but in the last few years, they've, uh, the Indian government has decided to uh, fix it up and make it uh, available for tourists and uh, pilgrimage. And uh, they've cleaned it up and put it in signage. So we'll be, uh, last time we had a sort of personal tour by the person who were, was responsible for the whole thing. And we'll hope to arrange some of that again. And we'll talk about some of the great music that the Beatles composed while they were there, like Dear Prudence and some of the others. But um, it was also what put Maharishi Mahesh Yogi and his transcendental meditation uh, on the minds of the world. And because of that as association with the Beatles starting in 67 and going through in 68, uh, he became essentially the most famous uh, guru in the world at that time. And Rishikesh went from being this holy city of pilgrimage that uh, had sacred ashrams and temples. It's up in the foothills of the Himalayas in this gorgeous setting on the banks of the Ganges with the hills in the, uh, in the background. And it's sort of an, an embarkation point for people who go further uh, north and uh, higher up into the Himalayas. So it has for centuries been a, a pilgrimage place but little known. And then when the Beatles went there, it suddenly became, you know, this famous place and Westerners started going there and uh, discovering yoga teachers and ashrams and so forth. And now it's uh, quite a popular place and, uh, but still retains that incredible uh, charm and that, that vibration of holiness and sacredness that, um, only comes to a place that you know people have spent long hours deep in uh, in silence uh, ha uh, has, and we'll be taking side trips to 
to places like Vashishta's cave, where the you know legendary ancient saint uh, lived and where you can still go and meditate. We'll go to visit many of the other ashrams that are there. And we have relationships with some of the swamis and uh, people who run those places. So we'll meet them. We'll meet people who represent Swami Shivananda. We'll go to the Parmath Niketan ashram. Sri Sri Ravi Shankar has an ashram there. There's an ashram in uh, Swami Rama's lineage and many, many others. And we'll take a, a side trip up to some, some very holy sacred places uh, up the river and we'll go to Hardwar where uh, there are another holy city less than an hour away and you know there's places associated with Neem Karoli Baba with Ananda Moin Ma some of the most famous gurus in, in Indian history and we'll visit those places and meet some of the uh, leaders of those uh, lineages and it'll, it'll just be, uh, you know, a very sacred several days that will be there. And there'll be time for just walking and discovering and satsangs among ourselves and, and with some of the uh, yogis who are in the vicinity and everyday discoveries. Because it's one of those magical places where uh, the unexpected happens. And you remember being there. I remember when we were there last time, it was your first visit there. And you fell in love with the place. I was so touched by it. I remember the exact moment we were on one of the, the tours. I think we were on the way to the Shivananda Ashram or something. And we were crossing the Ram Jula Bridge. And I just for a moment, I turned and looked back at the little central part of Rishikesh. And something inside of me stirred and said, I have to come back here. I know. And it's so a few months later, I, a few months did. later, I was back. I went back and I stayed there and spent months there just, yeah. you know, enjoying the Ganges. I mean, right there in the foothills of the Himalaya mountains where the water yeah. from the Ganges is fresh and clean and sacred and taking baths in the Ganges. Yep. And, we'll and we can all do that. Water. We can take dips. The water's clean and refreshing there. And we'll have e every night there's evening arati in the... Uh, two or three different places in Rishikesh and Hardwar, and we'll make sure we go to those places. And evening arati is this wonderful celebration, as you remember, with chanting and uh, homa cell, uh, fires, rituals, and it's a, it's a wonderful evening experience as the sun goes down over the Ganges. It is magical, and we should mention that the bridge you, just, you mentioned, Ramjula, is one of two footbridges. It's not uh, traffic, although you see motorbikes now going over them, <laughs> but it's meant for foot traffic and, you know, wagons and so forth. And it makes it so charming. To I remember the first time I was there walking over that bridge and thinking, oh, now I'm in sacred India. I've always wanted to be there because you, you're crossing the sacred Ganges on its way from its source in the Himalayas down, you know, to the populated parts of, of India, uh, you know, as, <laughs> to the polluted parts of, <laughs> of India. But up there, it's still, you know, the Ganges, the sacred Ganges. And mm. um, so we really look forward to it. And of course, I have a lot of stories about uh, Maharishi and the Beatles, because not only because of my research, but because I was... I spent a lot of time with Maharishi. He was my first guru, and I was trained by him to be a meditation teacher. Back in 1970, at the, the sort of height of the uh, transcendental meditation popularity. So I'll have a lot of stories to share about those days as well. It'll, a good time will be had by all. So well, I look forward to it, Phil. It's going to be fabulous. For yeah. me, it was the highlight. And I'm sure it'll be again this time. Yeah, Rishikesh is often the highlight of a tour, and even for people who have been there before. And that's why we added a couple of days this year. So we'll be there a longer period of time and could do more things and have more mm -hmm. leisure time as well. Well, I do All remember right. a wonderful puja, a little, a little ceremony that we had. Our friend June had done a beautiful, yes. I think it was Navaratri at the time, a puja that was conducted. And hopefully we'll have some of that this time. Yep. We'll, in fact, begin the tour as we did last year when we all meet in Delhi. We'll have those same pundits come 
and bless our uh, our tour with, by doing a uh, puja that we will all participate in. And that, that it was a highlight, but it was really just the beginning of the tour. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, you know, it had a, a carryover effect if the uh, pundits uh, were as powerful as we think they were. <laughs> we, they, it set the right tone for the rest of the trip. And we'll yeah. do it again. Next time, Brahms. Till the next time. Namaste. Namaste.